Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss the value added approach to measuring GDP, so our gross domestic product. And in a nutshell, in this approach we're going to add up the value added at each stage of the production of our final goods and services, where value added is defined as the difference between total sales and the cost of any intermediate inputs. So just to remind you, GDP is defined as the market value of the final goods and services produced within a country during a given time frame. And the idea behind value added is that one way to get to this market value of a final good or service is through adding up the value that is added at each stage of the production of that good or service. So very abstractly, for instance, if to produce some final good or service, maybe it took four stages, the final market value of that final good or service can be decomposed into the value of production that is achieved at stage one, plus the value that is added at stage two, at stage three, and at stage four. So we're reimagining the market value as a sum of the value added at each stage of production. Now I should say the process doesn't have to be linear like I've shown it here. This would be a very simple production process. The main point really is that the market value of that final good or service can be conceptualized as the sum of the values added at each stage. And so just to give an example, let's think of a really simple case where say a bakery produces a loaf of bread and sells that bread for say $6 to a consumer who consumes the bread. So the bread is a final good here. It's not being used in the production of any other goods or services. That's what makes it a final good. Now, if that was the only final good in our economy and there were no final services, then as per our definition of GDP, GDP would be equal to six. And let's say in my example here, in order to make that loaf of bread, the bakery uses some flour, which they buy from a mill, say $2 worth of flour, and they use some oil, maybe $2 worth of oil from an oil producer. Now the mill itself, let's say they produce the flour using $1 of wheat from a farm. Now, just as an aside, these other goods that I've mentioned here, apart from the bread, are what we call intermediate goods because they're being used in the production of another good or service. Now, the value of intermediate goods and services do not count towards GDP, at least in any direct sense. The idea is that the value of their production is already contained within the market price of the final good. So in our example here, you know, the $6 value of bread includes the $2 of flour. It includes the $2 worth of oil, etc. So we really are only interested in that $6 counting towards GDP. I'll make a table here for our example to find the value added. And you can see in my table here in the rows, I have the different stages of production of our loaf of bread. We will need to think about the cost of any intermediate inputs in order to calculate value added. So let's say, let's say the farm had zero cost of intermediate inputs for the wheat that they produce. So when I talk about intermediate inputs and their cost, I just mean the costs of any other goods or services that are used to produce a good or service. So the farm has zero of those, which means that the, the value added, the difference between the total sales, which is one, minus the cost of the intermediate inputs, which is zero. So value added is equal to one. Now the mill's cost of intermediate inputs is equal to one. That's how much they bought the wheat from the farm for, and that's they're using that to make the flour, but they sell the flour for $2. So the value that the mill has added is, well, two, that's the total sales, minus one, that's the cost of the intermediate inputs. So one all up. Now the oil, let's say the cost of the intermediate inputs was zero here too. So the value added would then be two, that's total sales minus zero, so two. And finally, our bakery, the cost of their intermediate inputs is, well, $2 for the flour and $2 for the oil, so four. And how much value did they add to those ingredients? Well, they sold their loaf of bread for six, that's total sales, minus four is two. They added $2 worth of value, that's what value added is. Right, so the total value added then is one to the farm, one to the mill, two to the oil factory, and two to the bakery, so six. So here the total value added is the same as the market value of output, so the value of the bread.
So we're reimagining the market value of the bread, our final good, as the sum of the value added at each stage of production. That's really at the heart of the value added approach of finding GDP. Of course, it's a really simple example. That's just for one final good. So when we use the value added approach to measure GDP for a large economy, we just do the same thing, but a much bigger scale. But that's really it. I have done other videos on the income approach to measuring GDP and also the expenditure approach to measuring GDP. And actually, I just have a playlist on GDP um, more generally. So I'll link to that in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that the video helped. Have a good one, everyone.